Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar. Basically, this, uh, my name is Sharon Johnson. I'm head, head of membership services at CCA. And what I thought we would do, we're, we're probably just about two weeks out from the awards entry deadline. Um, there's quite a number of resources that we have offered through our website to help you prepare your submission. But what we thought we would do today is just do another final run through, make sure that you're fully aware of the process uh, and give you the opportunity to, to answer any questions that you might have. I would expect the, the webinar today to last 20 minutes or so, so it shouldn't take us too long. And if you do have any questions as we go through the content, then please use the Q&A function um, that you'll see at the bottom hand of your screen. In terms of what um, I propose covering um, over the next 20 minutes or so, just do a quick overview of the, the programme itself. Look at the categories for 2019. There's a couple of changes in there, a couple of um, new categories that I'll give you a little bit of information on. Um, what makes a standout submission? So taking some of the learnings from our judging panel, sharing that with you today. Putting yourself into the, the judge's shoes. Um, just trying to think as a judge as you, you produce your submission. And then to talk through some of the preparations for the, the ceremony itself and the gala dinner. Okay, here we go. In terms of the awards themselves, um, why would you think about applying? Now, everybody is going to have their own reasons, um, but these are probably some of the more common things that, that we are told. Um, engagement, get your team involved in creating the submission, but it also creates a bit of a buzz within the, the contact centre, obviously depending on the category that you're applying for. Also, that recognition piece. Um, there's so much amazing work goes on in today's contact centres. And I think entering for an award and even getting through to that, um, the, the, the stage of um, shortlisting is a really amazing achievement and it's, it does give you that recognition to take back to the, the organisation. Demonstrate the pride that you have in the work that you do, the people that you work with, how you enjoy working as a team, whatever that may be. And the whole piece around celebration, you know, you, you work hard. Um, things aren't getting any easier, things are getting harder, I think, year on year. And it is really good to take that time out and just celebrate um, some of the successes that you may have had um, across the business. And also de demonstrates your commitment to excellence. You are an organisation that absolutely takes customer experience, customer service seriously, and you want to be um, recognised for that and you want to, to demonstrate your commitment to it. So just a couple of reasons why we know that you are entering these awards. Just some background notes, a couple of facts that you may might, might not be aware of. But we first launched our Excellence Awards programme in 2006. And in, since then, we've had over 2,800 applications. That's quite a lot um, of applications in a relatively small period of time. Each application is um, assessed by an independent judging panel. There's nobody in the CCA team or in the supply community that is allowed to um, score or review the applications that come in. It's all made up of people like yourself running contact centre operations on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and it's a, a volunteer um, programme as well. So they, they take the user own time to contribute to that. And actually, in, 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 since 2006, we've actually only presented 280 Excellence Awards. So if you're lucky enough to, to be a winner and pick up one of those trophies um, at the, the gala dinner, then you're, you're it's quite a select group of organisations that have them. It is quite a difficult thing to, to achieve. So this next part will quickly run through um, the categories, just to make sure that you know exactly what's available. Um, I would imagine that you've already considered what categories you want to apply for. You may have already started producing your submission, which is good, because we do only have a couple of weeks left. But I thought it would be useful just to quickly recap the way that we structure the applications. Um, some of them are kind of organisation-based awards like these, Customer Experience Brand of the Year, Innovation and Customer Service, Great Places to Work. Um, all of these obviously available to, to review in full from our website. But some of the categories are also around specific 
strategies or programmes that you might be have might have in a uh, place in the organisation. And also um, here you can see um, Best EX Transformation Technology Partnership or outsourcing collaboration. So really trying to um, promote relationships that you have with external providers um, and give recognition to the work that you're doing there as well. And then we also have the, the individual awards. So Rising Star, that was introduced last year. That was to replace Agent of the Year. Um, the agent role was obviously changing um, and we decided to, to look at that and take a different, slightly different approach to it. And it was about someone in your organisation who doesn't have any management experience, uh, not experience, responsibility and give them recognition for the, the job that they're doing. And then there are others, team leader, manager, and then obviously team of the year. And then the categories that we are introducing for 2019, we have innovation and leadership, and we have the most effective vulnerability strategy. Innovation and leadership is really specifically for directors, heads of departments, senior managers who have more than five years experience in managing teams or programs or initiatives um, that feed into that whole improvement of customer experience. So if you are looking at that one, be careful of who you're considering for it has to be a senior manager in the business. But it's really around um, recognising their approach to the management and delivery of customer experience. So take a look at that one if you think there's someone in your team that um, would be good to put forward for that. And then most effective vulnerability strategy, a massive topic um, that we've been discussing and debating through a lot of the forums and conferences and roundtable sessions that we've held this year. And so on the back of that, we've decided to introduce a new category. And this is really around an organisation being able to demonstrate that they have efficient and consistent approaches to empower people in the contact centre to be able to a listen to, identify, respond um, with appropriate levels of care, whether that's customers or um, maybe some colleagues at the dealer. So um, again, take a look at that. I think that's probably going to be quite a popular category this year, even though it's um, the first time that we've introduced it. And then we have um, some additional awards. Um, that is for the CC executive team. So quite often we engage with, well, we, we, we do engage with a lot of people over the course of a year, and it gives us the opportunity to recognise them personally. Um, so we have Director of the Year, so someone within an, an organisation, a senior level that really is championing, championing customer service excellence, and it gives us an opportunity to publicly um, come out and, and call them out. We also have Member of the Year, so we have a, a, a large network of individuals within our membership. Some are really, really proactive and very supportive of helping other CCA members. Um, so we quite often get lots of requests for, can you connect me to someone who could help me with whatever it might be? And there are some people um, each year that just stand out, they're always available, they, they just want to help, and that's how we have been able to recognise those. And then finally, we have a category for emerging leaders, um, which we will push out to organisations and ask them to put forward people within their team that they believe have that leadership capability for future um, roles, future leadership roles in the organisation. So when it comes to actually submitting your entry, it's a fairly straightforward process. The entries, the, the portal opened on the 1st of March, it will close on the 21st of June. We previously published the closing date of the 14th of June. Um, but we've extended that by one week. Again, there are some programmes out there that just stick with that closing deadline date. Um, in some respects, absolutely, that's the way it should be. We just always get inundated with people can have another couple of days. So, again, we've decided just to extend it for one more week, but that will be the final cut-off date. Once those entries come through to our online portal, they'll be distributed to the independent judging panel that I mentioned earlier. Um, now, each submission we receive will be reviewed um, by three individual judges. They don't see each other's scores, they don't see any of the comments, they just look at it um, from their perspective, score it following a standardised scoring template, and then submit the information online. 
Um, we then download all of that information and around about the 23rd of August is when we will be able to announce the shortlist. Um, following that, we will then allocate each of those shortlisted entries to another pool of judges. So this is your fourth, the fourth person that will actually take a look at your submission. They have the capacity to look at the comments and the feedback from the first stage of judging, and they will use that to um, help them structure the call that they will have with you. And then following that, obviously, the winners are announced at our gala dinner, which this year will be held at the Glasgow Hilton Hotel, which has been there for the last three or four years, um, and the date is the 13th of November. So hopefully you're already on the journey with your application, because I would say you do need to make sure that you've got a really good story um, and you have a structure in mind in terms of how you're going to pull that together. But in terms of um, approaching your entry, absolutely decide what categories you want to enter for. And I would suggest that you actually give each of the categories uh, a once over. You know, and if there's anything within them that sticks, then um, maybe give that some consideration. Then to start, if you've got a story, right, and it's, I would say that it, it's got to be memorable, something that you absolutely passionately believe is best practice, okay, and you, you think it is a, a fantastic thing, it's had a fantastic impact in your organisation, whether it's a person, whether it's an initiative, a strategy, whatever it is. Um, you then have the, the, the kind of concept in terms of what you want to enter. Start to put that content onto the online entry portal, which is there's a link to it on our website, and start to build your entry online. You can save as you go, so you don't have to have all the information at, um, at the one time. Save as you go, and make sure you bookmark the links generated for your entries, especially if you're doing multiple entries. Every year, um, there's a couple of organisations come back to it and they've lost their entry, and it's because they've overwritten it. So if you bookmark, every time you start an application or a, an entry for the awards, bookmark it and name it, and then you can always go back to it and make sure that you're um, updating the, the, the right one as you go along. Okay, so judging and being shortlisted. I've mentioned this previously. Three independent judges will score you, your submission. Now, once whether you get shortlisted or not, we will share with you the feedback and comments, comments that each of the judges have added onto the portal in relation to your submission. If you are shortlisted, that can be really, really useful when you are preparing for the next stage. But even if you're not shortlisted, then you should take heed, listen to or read what has been um, the comments that you receive back, because what that judge is trying to do is to help you improve the submission the next time round. Okay? Now, what they might do is also, um, if they've been reading a submission, they may also put, if this gets through to the next stage of judging, perhaps you should ask more about X, Y, or Z. And it's like a, it acts like a signposting system for um, the verification stage. Um, if something within the submission, maybe it should be pulled out, brought to life a wee bit more or something like that. So there's a wee, wee bit of um, information around that. And as I mentioned earlier, every award is marked against the same scoring criteria, and it's a, a very basic scale, but it all translates in, uh, into points when the, the scores are entered on the system. In terms of tips, we've there's quite a number of resources already available on our website. There's um, a couple of webinars, I think, from some of the judges. There's a, a submission pack that you can download. There's a couple of videos. Um, but these are probably the main tips that we've taken away um, from some of the conversations that we've had with the judging panel in the past. Stick within the word limit. You do have um, a bit of leeway. So I think it's um, between 5 and 10 percent. If you go over between 5 and 10 percent of the word count, you won't be penalised. But if you go beyond that, you will be penalised. And the judge has the right to determine um, how much they want to score you down. So please be aware of that. And the reason for that is we're trying to keep it as um, standardised as possible, giving everybody the same opportunity to tell their story within uh, a kind of framework, if that makes sense. 
You can attach appendices, but don't rely on them. And don't um, use the appendices to add extra word count, because there's no guarantee that the judge will read it. Make sure that um, the content and evidence um, within your submission, it, it's not full of anecdotal statements. You can actually back up the statements that you're making. Try and evidence as much as possible. Refer back to some reports. Refer back to um, information that you've received in relation to the, the, the story or the case study that you're presenting. Um, but absolutely, at the, always try and evidence as much as you possibly can. It's really, really important. And I think as well, when you're going through the, the application process, always refer back to the question. Make sure you're answering the question. Um, I think sometimes we can all get carried away when you start to build the story and you can get, um, you know, you can maybe animate it a bit more, but actually there might be another section that would be better placed, that piece of information. So always go back, have I answered that question properly and as, as well as I could, and have I evidenced my answer? The use of acronyms, internal business jargon, you know, don't assume that we all know um, your internal phrases um, for, for different things in the organisation. That can be quite difficult to understand. Um, so try and take that out as much as you possibly can. And I think this last point here, give us something to remember. You know, um, it's, there's no point in putting all your effort into creating a submission that's not really a great story or um, it's not really that innovative or whatever that may be, try and make it something to remember. So put put the emphasis on the great things that are happening in your organisation. And then before you submit that application, again, double check it. Make sure that you've answered the questions. I've, I've talked about that already. But you know what sometimes is quite good? Actually give it to someone outside of your team, outside of your organisation even, and say, can you understand the story that I'm trying to tell within this submission? Because sometimes it, it might just flag up little bits where it has turned into internal language, or you know that the flow maybe isn't working quite as well as, uh, as it should. Make sure that the contact information is accurate. Um, we will contact you via the, the information that you provide. Quite often there's um, typing mistakes, things like that, and email addresses and that delays the whole process of whether you find out whether you're shortlisted or not. Download your submission and keep a copy of it, because if you are shortlisted, you'll want to refer back to that um, and as you prepare for the verification call. And again, just that bookmark for your submission link, which we've already said. And then hopefully, you'll all make the shortlist. Um, some people won't, unfortunately. Um, but hopefully that process of feedback um, will help prepare for next year. By about late August, you'll receive notification whether you've made it to the shortlist. Um, I think we, we talked about that, we noted the date earlier on. Give you feedback on your applications, all of them. And then if you are shortlisted, you'll receive instruction on um, arranging a time for the next stage of the process. So we will connect you directly with the, the judge that will carry out the verification call and you will uh, arrange um, with them a, a good time for the, the call to take place. And at that point, um, and you can do it before obviously, but if you are shortlisted and you do want to, to be at the gala dinner, I would suggest that you get in touch and book um, your requirements, whether it's a table, whether it's a couple of passes, whatever it might be. Um, but the dinner's always in high demand and we do always sell out. Um, so I would make sure that you get in with that as soon as you can. The verification call itself, um, it's really a way of, so we have, for a category, we might have eight or ten submissions that are shortlisted, and this is a way of us trying to push to the top um, who the winner within that category should be. It's not um, designed to be intimidating or scary, it's not as scary as it sounds as it says on here, um, but it's really to give um, that judge the opportunity to really delve deeper into your written submission and to pull out some of the things that you know actually make it stand out from the crowd. So if all those other submissions within that category, how, how do we know which one deserves to win that award? Again, it's all based on a scoring system, um, which is the same right across the board. Um, the verification call will be carried out 
through conference call, if it's maybe two people on the line, or maybe I just a direct um, line with you and the judge. The score will be added to the scores that you've already been allocated from the first stage of judging. And basically, the organisation that scores the most is the, is the, the one that wins the award. Those um, verification calls will take place between September and October. Um, and if you have been shortlisted, it, uh, you can be as flexible as possible because the judging panel do have quite a number of submissions to review. And then it comes on to the, the celebration. Um, many of you will have been. You might actually be on that stage. I think this was from 2018, maybe, 2017. And these were some of the award winners from that that night. And we invited them up onto stage. There's lots of opportunities on the night for press, um, for video, if you want to, to be filmed, accepting your award and making some comments, which you can then use um, back in the office. Um, and we will feed everything out through social media. Um, so you can be tagged in that as well. So the gala dinner itself, 13th of December, it really is a night to celebrate. There will be about 650 people there. That's the capacity for the venue that we use. And being shortlisted is a huge achievement. Please don't underestimate it because there are some organisations entering the CC Excellence Awards programme. They've been doing it for years and they really know um, what to pull out, what, what to put into those submissions. Um, and they've really refined how they actually go through the whole process. Yes, it needs to be a great story in the first place, a great case study. Um, so to get to that stage is a huge achievement. The gala dinner really brings together the best in industry. It's about all of these organisations have submitted, they've been shortlisted, it's, it's the, the best of the best basically in the room um, and an opportunity to celebrate with everyone. Tickets are on sale just now. Um, the gala dinner itself kicks off with a champagne reception. You have a three course meal including coffee, it includes wine. And then we have um, a professional compere who will take us through the proceedings for the evening, finishing off with some live entertainment. Now, you've probably seen some of the messages that have come out already, but ta da! <laughs> the compere this year is Lenny Henry, um, Sir Lenny Henry, I should say. Um, now, Sir Lenny is actually joining us for the final session of the second day of convention, which will be in the afternoon of the 13th of November. And he's doing a, a, a Q&A session. Um, we think he wants to talk about, or you want him to talk about, um, diversity and inclusion. Um, it's a big um, area of interest for him, and I think it would be quite interesting to hear his views on it. So he'll come along, be part of the convention, but he will be facilitating the award evening, and hopefully bringing some fun to it as well. So just a reminder of the key dates. Um, we've already covered these, but just to summarise, 21st of June, that's your deadline date. It's midnight on the 21st of June, not close of um, like 5 p.m. close of work, but midnight on the 21st of June, and then the system will close and you won't be able to enter after that point. 23rd of August, we'll announce the shortlist. We'll write to you personally um, to tell you um, whether you've been shortlisted or not, but we'll also make a, a press release announcement as well. September to October time, verification calls, you'll be contacted or connected with your verification judge, and it's up to you to arrange that call. And then we'll all come together on the 13th of November to celebrate the winners. I mentioned that we've got some additional resources online. Um, you can view all of the entry forms. You can click on them and download the full application form. And I would suggest you do that before entering any award. Even just use it to, you know, kind of make notes how you want to structure your submission. Always remember to answer the question. Um, award winners webinar, uh, the categories and application forms. There's a download pack as well. You can access them all through the website ccglobal.com under um, awards and accreditation. I think it's the first tab. And of course, um, my colleague Sophie, Sophie Connors, she is um, managing the programme, so can be contacted at any point, regardless of what your question is. Um, if you've asked it before, don't worry about it. She's there to help you um, get the most out of your the, the whole process. So please don't be shy in getting in contact. 
And the last thing is to say good luck. Um, I hope you have your plan in your mind what you want to go for. Um, I'm sure you'll do it amazingly well. Follow the guidance, download the webinars, take a look at them, get the team together, try and get as many good heads in the room at the one time and see right, how we're actually going to structure this application and make the absolute most of it. And as I mentioned, just for more information, visit the website ccglobal.com. So a really quick run through, um, really just a reminder of how the whole thing comes together, the process. Um, but if there's any questions whatsoever, then please get in touch. And hopefully we'll see you on the 13th of November. Thank you very much.